Greetings everyone and welcome to another WIST technology tutorial. In today's lesson I'm going to be taking a mundane task such as taking attendance and turning it into a lesson regarding advanced Google Forms and Google Spreadsheets. Now the way I've thought about this is I wanted to have one attendance booklet for all of my classes where I could very easily compare data regarding absences and tardies. Okay. So let me walk you through the workflow and then I will take you into the back end. So this is a very simple form. Um, I've divided it up with page breaks. So each response will take me to uh, a separate section of the form. So here, for example, if I teach four classes, um, by clicking continue, it'll take me to that class list where I can then take attendance for those classes. So let's say, for example, I'm teaching an English 6Q class. I click continue, and it brings me to the last page in my form. And there are two class lists, and you'll notice I've opted for the checkboxes uh, question. And you'll see in a minute when I get to showing you the spreadsheet why I chose to use checkboxes. Um, the idea simply was making sure that everything landed in the same cell, which often is counterintuitive. Normally we like to put things in separate cells to sort them uh, easier. But in this case, it actually worked better for me to put them all into one cell. So uh, let's say, for example, on this day, uh, we have Tom and Chris who are absent. And we have, we'll say, Amber is, she arrived late. And I click Submit. And my attendance work for the day, or that class period, is done. Simple, sweet, fast, um, and pretty much anyone can, can do that. So now let me take you to where it gets a little interesting. Um, so this is where all of the data is being dumped. This is my spreadsheet. Um, along the top, you can see these are my, my questions. Um, the different classes are here. And they're listed as well down this column. Um, one thing you'll notice is I have a column here, and, and you'll notice that this hasn't been working consistently for me, but there's a script that on form submit is supposed to generate a URL that you can automatically um, edit a response. Um, so it's something I'm still working out, so let me just delete this here. And I'll show you, actually, it looks like a good time to go up to where the script is in the script editor. There's this bit of code. Um, this is not my code. I don't remember where I came across it, but it was in one of the forums. And I simply modified this to uh, sort of for the purpose I needed it. Um, so right here, this is the key, which is located in the URL of my form. Right. That's if you can look up here, you're going to notice these are identical. It's I an identical string of text and numbers up here. So that's that. the The next part I modified was the name of the response sheet. Um, I made sure this said form responses one because um, that corresponds to where all of my data is being entered. And the last piece I modified was where I wanted to plant that URL link. And I simply took my spreadsheet and counted over to column L, which was column 12. And I said, this is where I'd like that URL to go. Um, so and then after I've authorized this to work, I set it up to run on a form submit trigger. So I'm actually just going to run it right now in order to get that URL there. So as we watch this happen, here it is. So this URL takes us back to this original form response. Um, and just as a matter of maintenance, I think I'm going to look at all of the project's the triggers. And I'm just going to delete this one, save it, and then add it back. And again, this trigger was designed that it's going to run this custom script or function from the spreadsheet 
when a new form is submitted. And I could even set up notifications if I wanted to know each time a new form was submitted, but I'm not interested in doing that for attendance purposes. I'm going to click Save. So now that we've got the URL, um, in theory, and this hasn't been happening for me consistently, you'll notice all these triangles, and these are indications where it has worked. So I'm still sorting out. Maybe some of you have an answer as to why it works and why it doesn't work sometimes. Um, but if I click on this, I can easily get back to that response and make a change. Now, let's say, for example, Am Amber brought a very valid excuse for being late, and I don't want that to be recorded in my attendance record. I would simply uncheck her. And in theory, and it has worked, if I hit Submit, she is removed from the late column in the spreadsheet. But as you can see, as one of my frustrations in doing this, this hasn't been happening consistently as it did not now. So if anyone is willing to offer a solution as to why that is not happening, I would be grateful for that. Um, in the meantime, I could very simply just delete Amber, and she won't be reflected in the, the final tally of, of late people. All right. So this, of course, is just the raw data. Um, now I need to kind of shape it into something that's a little bit more intelligent and giving me some information that is useful. So here is a simple spreadsheet uh, that has uh, all of my classes with some conditional formatting. I've set it up that the darker the green, the more absences or tardies by the student. So from a long distance, I can really get a sense of um, who is out a lot or who's always there, uh, so on and so forth. And it's I can manage this all on one page. And the way this works is through the use of the array formula function. Now this is quite complex. Um, I really didn't come up with this on my own, um, but I did think about the concept uh, when I was searching for this on in through the forums on, on Google and whatnot that the idea is I wanted to be able to count in my English 6P class the number of times that Jessica was either absent or late. And remember, these names are all planted into one cell. So this, the formula has to be able to count per cell how many times Jessica appears, or this name. So. And if you have kids with the same names, well, then you want to make sure you have like an initial or something that's going to differentiate uh, the string of text in the name category. So this is what the formula turned out to look like. And there's a couple of keywords in here that are, are useful. So, of course, it's the array formula. But then there's this count functions, right? So this is allowing it to count the number of times that uh, something is happening. And then the find function is actually telling it what it needs to find before counting. So re basically, we're finding the contents of A3, and we're matching that against the raw data here in the form responses. And then we're going to bring back the total number. Um, so that's essentially how all of these classes are generating this information. And it's updated dynamically. So as I submit data, um, we could even do another one really quickly. So let's see, in 7R, I see that Susan has been absent twice. Okay, let's make her absent three times. So I'm going to go back to the form, choose the 7R course, submit, and we said it was Susan. I'm going to hit submit, and we'll notice uh, right away that uh, Susan has now been absent three times. So this is all being tallied in the background automatically. So this is most of the, the logic behind this spreadsheet um, and some of the advanced features which we talked about were this uh, array formula and the adding a script to produce the URL to edit the responses. Uh, and again, I'm getting this undefined, so it hasn't been consistently working, but I will uh, come back to this. And now this particular tab, these are my classes. And what I'm using this column for is simply to populate that question in the form. Um, so let's 
jump on over to the actual form and look at the way it's constructed. So, so you can see there's a page break and this first question is set up to go to a page based on the answer, right? So if 6P is selection, I is selected, I want to go to the 6P class. Um, and I just copy and pasted names, that's why they're identical in all these classes, but they could actually be different names. And then in the same manner that I I picked the class names from a list um, using the form ranger add-on, I also did that for the students for the class list. So if I just open up uh, the form ranger add-on, we'll take a look at how this one is currently set up. Now right away you'll notice here that I haven't turned this portion of the add-on on. Um, as a, for an attendance feature, it's not really going to be updated all that op often, so I really don't need to refresh the questions um, all that frequently. And you can see here that I'm populating uh, this class, the class question with a list I've called class, and then all of these are corresponding to their appropriate classes. But I'll just close out of that. So that's a little tour of what I've been working on. And again, if, uh, if anyone out there has a sense of why this is not consistently working for me, I'd be happy to hear about that in the comments. Because um, it, it, it has been doing it occasionally. So it's just a matter of making it happen all the time. So that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.